the weird thing about this acoustic uh, synth engine is that I'm using breath control for this, but today I could not bring my wind control with me, so I will not be able to do this kind of stuff. So now we're going to start from scratch. So close this thing. Don't save. And uh, here's the thing. We're going to do a little bit of a workshop of how we work with like requests and things like that. So how many of you are uh, into pitching ideas for like a game or something? What should we make? A adventure game? A, a military shooter? Uh, uh, some? A dark fantasy. All right, I'll take this challenge. So uh, let's do that. A dark fantasy. Um, that could be anything, which is great. It doesn't need to be, um, it could be modern day fantasy, like, uh, or do you think something more like epic, like Lord of the Rings kind of fantasy, or? Okay, a little bit more industrial metal part of that. Yeah, okay, I know the Dark Souls. All right. Well, let's see. We need to find some sounds, and let's start working with... The thing is that I can start from any point of view, so I think maybe a, a dark fantasy, let's, let's concentrate more like on the action part of the music, like Dark Souls is an action game. So let's find some cool percussions and a very interesting um, uh, time signature. Well, he said dark fantasy. Yeah. I was thinking, like he said, he mentioned Dark Souls, uh, like more action t uh, style of things that will be happening. So let's try to find something really cool. Now, the weird thing is that when I put this thing in, I can barely hear you. But now you will be able to see me work. And when I think I'm done with this idea, I will take it off and I will listen to the next request. Okay? All right. So let's find something really cool. So. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, let's make that. Let's make it a track instead. So the first thing I do is obviously, as you know, checking the tempo. And uh, let's put it down about a hundred. About a hundred. Okay. It's a very small. Can we make it a little bit bigger? Too big. About a hundred. signature track time signature track let's go with something really odd that really works uh, one two three four okay now let's look for some instruments I know I would like to have big drums Not loops. I want the instruments. Uh, let's kill that. Percussion kits. Okay.
think it's pretty cool. All right, let's add some cool effects on top of that. Uh, mm, orchestral strikes, more percussion. Do we have a taiko? Taiko, taiko, taiko. Taikos. Do a little bit of dubbing there. All right, that's a good bass groove. All right, what should we add next? Any instrument requests? More drums? Drones? Brass, okay, let's do it. Let's find some brass. Uh, let's put a, okay. A dark, dark brass. We got something for you. Da -da 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 -da. Let's go there. can make it a little bit fatter if we add some kind of synthesizer in the background there with a with a bass something that really feels like a foot monster uh, foot monsters do we have a foot monster oh yeah <laughs> this hall is amazing. I'm just gonna use it more like an accent. So let's make it a little bit more, um, more attacky. <laughs> Rumble. And then we will mix it down a little bit. All right. Let's let's do this. Let's do this. <laughs> Oops, sorry, wrong ear.
that I did a mistake. strings would be the next step, right? Let's add some uh, combination strings with uh, uh, spiccatos. I love spiccatos. Uh, spiccatos, 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 spiccatos. There we go. Uh, spiccatos. High. Now, of course, in this room we have a natural reverb, uh, but I would still real put a, a real reverb on top of that. So it's going to sound a little bit weird, but, I, but this is how I work. Uh, let's helms deep. That's ah, too deep. a better instrument to do that let's let's get another one how does it sound all right thank you I'm not sure if the volume is too loud or it rumbles like a surround sound cinema <laughs> uh, all right let's see if we can get something action going on here let's put faces on s kill um, countdown do we have a countdown only seconds left. Yes. Sulu, tickets of World Five.
could be cool. Of course, let's let's mark up the tracks. <laughs> Percussion. It will be easier for us to mix it later. Uh, always keep it organized. Percussion. Dark brass. Foot monster. And spiccato low. Spiccato. All right. And here, action hits. Let's call it that. It's safe. <laughs> you <laughs> never know. Uh, all right. Um, dark fantasy. Let's see. Action cue. Okay. Get in at the second, second. suggestions let's make it a little bit more dramatic when we're um, getting it from maybe after two things let's make a rumble of some sort rumble uh, let's see whoosh hits I love whoosh hits rise and hits let's see too brutal. Uh, we need something more percussive. Yeah. Yeah. That's right.
let's move on to a new part. And that took us only 25 minutes. Okay, thank you. Uh, I feel like I would like to break it off to a more traditional movie score, kind of feel like a triumphant feeling. And usually in this case, uh, a three-quarter measure is kind of that, that gives you that kind of feeling of uh, ro royal royalty. You know. And that means we're going to have to change the, uh, the rhythm pattern as well. add some uh, shakers or some kind of metal to get a little bit of a drive. Um, let's go. Stylus. Uh, group maybe it is, I suppose. Of course, this is very much for pop music, but we can make it work in our favor. Thank you. 
add some um, s uh, swelling strings of some sort. So let's get in there. Nice of you to come by. Okay. Is it very loud outside when you go or came in? No? Okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> I'm glad they finished over there because I'm afraid I was killing them. All right. Okay. Again, let's find some nice strings. We would like to um, have it a little more separated now because I'm th imagining that I'm having a big string section. Uh, so let's have it a bassos, contrabass, cellos. Let's make it another medium one as well. We're going to have violas. Nobody loves the viola but me. I love viola. Yeah, all right. We're, we're friends, best pals. And then we're going to go into, actually, I'm not violin one. We're going to violin two first because it's a little bit behind the section. And then violins one. Uh, here we go. So, oh, no, not fast. I need, uh, yeah. Sometimes variation is good, uh, especially if you're writing for a game. The, the main goal is to, uh, like when I did Resident Evil 6, uh, the main course was that we had very limited amount of time to write music. And of course, they were actually opting for us to write adaptive music, which means many, many separate tracks. But it also should mean that the tracks are very short and uh, they should not sound like it's repeating. And that was a big problem. They promised us that we would be able to layer the tracks in many different places. So it would repeat the same song, but with different layers activating on and on very smoothly. Uh, but here's the thing. I, I wish there were more programmers here so I could talk to them directly. If you promise something to the musician that you promise the game, going to be dynamic. Um, if you're running into problems, the thing that Capcom did, they were realizing that we have like 20 channels of gunfire, ambient footsteps, uh, 5.1s around, and maybe about 30 to 40 channels of separated audio tracks they're supposed to go in and out. They didn't tell us. So when I started playing Resident Evil 6 and I heard my music was not dynamic, and it then it started to sound very repetitive in the end. Um, so programmers, if you're running into that, please tell musicians, because I would probably have written the music a lot more differently then if I knew if there were any consequences of too much audio. And of course, Capcom stripped down the complexity to only uh, a one stereo track. <laughs> and there should have been 40. <laughs> so yeah, I was kind of disappointed to find that out. But anyway, it, it sounded good, but it just lacked that kind of sp special feeling uh, as a whole. Yeah. Uh, but right now, um, if, if we say we're pretending that we're making like a, a portfolio piece, uh, try to make a lot of variations because in the end we, we, don't, we don't want tracks to sound repetitive like Super Mario Brothers because this is not that kind of game. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, but try to make it dynamically interesting, um, the chordal structures, the, the timbres. I mean, we're trying to invoke dark fantasy horror and the guy just left. Um, so thank you, Mr. Nobody. Uh, oh, he moved up. <laughs> OK, all right. So um, so in general, try to find variations. Even if you have a very limited amount of time span, they actually expect you to come up with a lot of cool things going happening in the piece. So yeah, thank you for the question. Yeah, uh, basically. But uh, right now, as I said, uh, I have no plans whatsoever. What's happening right now is very spontaneous. I had no plans what we're supposed to do here. And that's what I'm trying to simulate, that you are the client. I'm trying to fulfill your request. And if I feel I'm going the way and when I'm stuck, I will probably send it in. And that's why I'm asking you for help. OK? Sounds good? All right. Uh, so we need to come up with a, I feel I would like to add some melodic things in here. But right now, I would like to create this uh, string section um, that is a full uh, violin uh, and we're going to have it a very nice legato patch. 
that means the the strings will be able to glide between notes when we're playing like very dramatic uh, but we need to also add more channels for that and that's wrong uh, legato section section call this contra What time is it now? It's only been 40 minutes, hooray, we're so far away. <laughs> Okay, I couldn't go down there. Actually, that's not bad. Let's change the synth bass for that. So let's start with the contra, and then we'll add the cello, and then the viola, violin two, and violin one. I, I, I forgot to put my headset in. Very hard to write music without head headphones. Okay. Two repetitions of that, and then I can make it more interesting. So let's just add that, get rid of that. Let's try it again. something weird is just happening. Ah, channel one, it should be channel two. <laughs> okay. So. I forgot to add the reverb, so again we have to add the reverb. Reverb really decides how I'm phrasing the strings. Uh, right now in my ear sounds very, very dry. Of course for you it doesn't. Oh, what's 
going on? I forgot to switch the track. Ah, I see. Okay. Here we go again. <laughs> See if I take off the um, percussions for now and just looking for the uh, harmonies that I want. <laughs> A lot of these strange harmonies.
trying to create this creepy atmosphere. So bear with me for newcomers. I'm not sucking at it. It just takes time. something to spread out the percussion so they're a little more something more happening in the sound so I'm gonna put a auto pan and we're gonna put it on force there let's listen <laughs>
we're starting to get into the next part. Um, but I would like to be more dramatic in the end. So let's find a crescendo of some sort. I forgot to save. Oh, yes. Thank you. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. One more time. Yes. I do have an auto save sometimes, but yeah, you never know when it's going to take or not. Uh, all right. Let's import. Um, let's find a cool little, uh, little thingy. Sample. I farted. Actually, let's take a riser. Oh. Very scary. I just want it to be pretty much freehand, and that's what I like about crescendo is you can do whatever you feel that'll be. Let's see. Start with the action cue for for real. Let's go to four four and make it really aggressive. And maybe add some guitars in there, distorted dark guitars like doom metal stuff like that. All right, that's the stuff. Right, let's let's find a guitar. And of course, I, if I had a real guitar, I would play it, but it was just too heavy to bring with me. So uh, I got the second best thing. But <laughs> wait, there's more. Oh, but don't worry, that happens. Nobody's perfect. And I lost a VST connection. But don't worry, we saved it. So we're we're fine. So uh meanwhile we wait for the uh program to reboot. How's everything going? Sounds okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah, I use the mod wheel, so always try to experiment because there are synthesizers or um, or synthesizer patches that are using the mod wheel. Uh, so always trying to make sure that you can cram out the best you can from each sound or the programmers don't doing it for you. Yes, uh, I'm using Cubase six. Well, actually, a good point. <laughs> it's like, bing. yeah, <laughs> yeah. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's actually been working pretty well for me, but uh, I felt now that this original team that left Cubase team, they started up uh, Studio One, so that's going to be my next buy if I upgrade. Because I really like their flat EQs. You can actually shape the sound and form the 
the identity of your own sound into that. Logic Pro always felt they had that kind of a little bit digital shimmer on tops. It has that kind of a poppy sound, so it's really hard to get out of that. So uh, if you really would like to get into your own sound, yeah, I think Cubase or Studio One would be great. Yes? I, if I save anything on backup, well, uh, I'm not sure. I don't really uh, think so much about it. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the MIDI files in Cubase get really big compared to to general MIDI standard. But uh, even if I write a standard MIDI file, yeah, it takes maybe five megabytes of space now these days because of all the different inputs, and especially with this electronic wind instrument that I have, it outputs five streams of continuous needy data. So obviously that file is going to be a lot bigger when you're writing songs like that. So, yes? Uh, no, that's the thing. Uh, the, the point I didn't mention was that uh, uh, this kind of workshop means um, um, I use no templates. I start every project from a clean slate. And so you could see that I'm actually just composing from my deepest imagination that I could possibly be. I mean, I got the suggestion of the, uh, oh, well, where did he go? <laughs> uh, he's sitting a little bit further back. OK, all right. So uh, the hardware setup. Yes, uh, it was a request from my agent that I would be portable. So I have been composing pretty much the last 10 years on laptops. The entire Resident Evil score for me was on a laptop with 8 gigabytes of RAM, which was crazy, you know? So a lot of hard bounces and mixing and stuff. So but limitations actually make you more creative. This is not a monster computer. Either. It's just 16 gigabytes of RAM and 700-something uh, gigabytes of SSD. Uh, but it actually gets the work done, and of course, and I save it all up, back up on the hard drives just in case. So I'm trying to be as portable as possible, because if I am, that means I can go to any other game studio and use their sound system to mix it if, if it's required to do so. So yeah, so a key requisite, be portable if you can. All right, thank you. All right, let's see where we were. Um, Doom Metal or something like that. Yes. Of course. This is Nick. Missed me, huh? All right. Who are you? Swear to me. Okay. Uh, uh, let's see. All right. It sounds really strange, but remember, well, this is a pure guitar. I, n I don't trust you. No effect. Discard. Okay, it seems it doesn't want to do that for me. Let's try something else. Let's try um, uh, this distortion here and then amps and. That's more like a lead. Hold on, that's a sec. I need to listen to myself. darker. I'm going to try to get the other one one more time. Maybe putting in a different thing might salvage. Yes, I got you. Metal. Yeah.
get something like that. <laughs> All right, we need to change the um, thingy again. Uh, no, not there. Sorry, I'm going to move you. Three bars, four bars, please. Too many bars, I'm not drunk. Here we go. Yeah, this this uh, kind of makes it my muscle a bit slippy, so Let's get some drums. Uh, what do we have? What time is it? Whoa, it's only been one hour and ten minutes. We're we're pretty much good on, on time. Sounds a bit too late. We're not doing funk today. work.
Uh, a good tip, if, 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 you, if you're doing drums and you need to really accent the kick drum to sound a little bit more meaty, dub it together with the bass line and you will have a really cool, cool effect going on there. Because this kick drum is not really that deep, it's actually kind of very thin, but very good attack on it. Um, so let's dub it in. Oh, I can't see. Move.
I also try to find open spaces where I can actually improve because there's already ro a lot of rhythms going on, and I would like to just drive up the uh, the, the drive of this dramatic thing. Add some metal, a car door or something. And, uh, we're no problem out there. Right? <laughs> nope. Junkyard. two sounds that I can interact with.
right after it's coming in from the three, four, I would like to start the melodic content right away because otherwise we just keep building and building like an anthem and it's not leading anywhere. So let's let's do that. And then let's see if we can tie it together with uh, uh, something. So if I was technically writing um, a, a game song, I would probably have these two parts as an intro. And then I would probably just be looping this area that comes after this. Uh, and we actually were perfect. We can do it. We can do it. We can finish this song today. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so let's do that. Let's copy it a few times. And then we're going to do a few more sections. Um, but now let's add the melodic content to it. Ooh, and that is too far. Uh, one more. That's right. easily repaired. Okay, well let's change that to grid relative. That means I, I usually play all the strings live, I don't quantize that at all. So <laughs> Now I start to feel it's getting a little bit too slow. So we're going to amp it up a little bit or fill in the background a little bit more. I haven't decided. But let's do that. Let, let's do that. Uh, tempo track. We have 100 and something. Get it.
okay. It's okay. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Stop. Uh, that was the action. It's, there's something that's bothering me here. I think I would like to lower the strings down here. So 12 minus, um, minus 3. <laughs> Just guessing a lot of the way. But here we go. One more time. I would like to have something happening there. A little bit John Williams. Let's see if we got something. Uh, maybe we got something. Those are. Or a choir of some sort. Uh, that's this gonna be a little patch that's gonna take a little while to to load. So any questions so far? Yeah. Uh, whenever I look for a keyboard, I, I wanted to have modulation beal and uh, pitch separated. I don't like the X, Y joysticks because they actually limit myself. So wheels, I prefer much. It's a bonus if they have um, knobs. I love knobs. I know not in that sense, you know, but I love turning stuff around. Um, maybe pads are okay. Uh, 
But the, my, my prime requisite, just have a good wheel system, two wheels or more. Yeah. But that's my preference. You, everybody's different, but that's, that's what I like. Okay, let's see if we can get something in here. No. I want women and men. That's not it. That's Maratusa. Let's see if we can put something in there. Not more cowbell, more reverb. a little bit velocity sensitive. If I press too hard, it goes straight there. So I need to be soft when I'm playing this, which is really weird, you know.
assassin stuff in the second part, the, the action stabs of some sort. Ba -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> How do you feel? Where's, oh, actually, let's take a small break. I think you need to get a bone stretcher. So let's take a five minute break and then we finish this. Thank you. Oh, I love Shevanai. Do you know Shevanai? If you love fantasy music, I would suggest this. Okay, we have you some sound, please. <laughs> and the fun thing you can do with this is that you can actually make her breathe. Inhale. And I don't like the fast attack here, so we're going to change it to a little bit slower. All right, I love her. She's actually a friend of mine. She's from Spain, and she was working together with a famous uh, library builder called Eduardo Talaronte, and he created all these amazing libraries, and I'm so happy I got to talk to her, and she's very, very cool. Yep. Most important libraries for game music? Uh, uh, that's a really tough question because uh, one day I've been writing jazz, another day I write metal, some other days I write techno. So there's like no really right or wrong libraries. I guess it's up to what you want to do. Uh, in my case, I really love movie music as my base. Uh, actually, I wanted to be a movie composer. Uh, so writing game music actually became a little bit of a s side quest for me. Uh, so I actually aim towards the more cinematic sounding sample libraries, but uh, but when it comes to dance and techno, yeah, synthesizers all the way, not so many samples. Yeah. Uh, but I do love Contact. It's probably the most um, expansive uh, plugin you will ever get, and it keeps on expanding with more amazing instruments and techniques. It's not only a sampler, it has uh, certain programs put in arpeggios, and oh wow, you're not going to fall down for me, are you? Wow, I almost broke a, a $3,000 computer. Yep. <laughs> yep. It works in any software that supports VST, VSTI support. So if you have logic, no problem. PreSon is one, no problem. Uh, uh, I guess Fruity Loops has it as well. So there's no limit now because uh, Cubase actually put the standard for the VSTi uh, since in the beginning of the year 2000. So yeah, no problem. Oh, Ableton, that's awesome. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, I was supposed to find some kind of um, brass style uh, attacks of some sort. So let's see if we can get some more cool stuff out here. Um, let's, uh, oh. Right, yeah, that was funny. Okay, all right, let's find something. Uh, faces on kill. Okay, it's auto saving now. All right. 
Hmm? Yeah, it, it auto saved for me. So. <laughs> slow for me uh, let's find something more seconds left make it show when all hope is lost uh, let's see what that could be Four. Okay. Uh, I don't find what I'm looking for, so let's have a look at uh, Symphopian stacks. I know where I'm supposed to go. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're looking for brass, cinematic brass, chords. Again, let's add some more reverb.
Let's do it, folks. Try that.
I feel hip hop. We're going to dark hip hop fantasy now. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I'm a crazy little piece of something. <gasps> Come on. It just seems to be right there. But we managed to fuse the genre of dark fantasy. But once we got the industrial metal going, we can even add in some more machinery. Um, let's let's get something nice industrial here, and then we'll call it day because I feel we're done, or something really big. Uh, what's here? Break beats. Zero. And that's too fast. No. Hmm, if we keep it low. Nah, let's go with something where it really funky. close to the other stuff. when I accent the kicks a little bit more. Let's listen from the top and then we have our thing complete.
So uh, this is normally how long this takes for me to just give out a basic idea that's not mixed or anything. But I try to do a little bit of mixing, but we don't need to take it here right now because we all know how to mix. And after that, I send this off to the client, and then I just await feedback, and then they tell me what to change and, and so on. So this is my workflow. Tomorrow, let's try something else. No more fantasy. Let's try something cool. So thank you very much for coming. Thank you for enjoying this. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow it starts from 4, I believe. Um, did someone check the schedule? It's 4 p.m., right? Yep. Okay, so if there are any more questions. All right. Everyone is feeling good? All right. Well, thank you very much, and see you tomorrow. Thank you.